the first type of the membrane electrode is called glass membrane electrode, which is specifically used for pH measurement. So that's why I call it that if I, I, I told you that if you are in the lab, you're going to use this every day because glass membrane electrode is what makes the pH meter or the pH electrode. These are all made from the glass membrane. This is the example of the thing. So why, why glass membrane? So this is the structure of the glass membrane. So glass, glass is the... What does it call the amorphous solid of the silicon, right? The amorphous solid of the silicon. And since it is amorphous, so you can tune, you can fine tune the size of the, <coughs> the solid structure. And generally, the glass membrane has the porous structure. This is the structure of the glass membrane. So the blueish thing is the silicon. So SiO2 here, silicon, SiO2. And general glass is not going to be selective. So sometimes, not sometimes. So in order to make the glass membrane to be specific for pH or proton measurement, so they fine tune the manufacturing process and add some chemicals. For example, uh, the Corning O15 is the glass membrane that selectively responds to proton. And it has 22% 20, of sodium oxide 6% of calcium oxide and 72% of silicon dioxide. So most of it is silicon. And they have some sodium and calcium. And the glass membrane properties is that it has high resistance, of course, because you are doing potentiometry and you want to get the constant potential. So uh, it has to have high resistance, otherwise you can have some current which can uh, shift or can change your potential result. And sometimes they will dope sodium ion and lithium ion in the glass membrane so that it will give you the electrical connect, uh, conduction or connection. Because again, although you need the high resistance, you still need some electrical connection to make it the complete circuit. So they dope sodium and lithium across the membrane and make the electrical conduction. And now you can see that the silicon structure here has a lot of pores. So we call it glass porous structure. And this pore, it turns out, it selectively binds proton over other ions. So like this gray, -ish gray circle here is basically proton or hydrogen ion. Because of the size and the appropriate charge, that's why the glass membrane selectively binds with protons. If your glass membrane may be too large, then has too large uh, porous size, then it can uh, bind with other ion instead. But with this specific example, like Corning 015, it has appropriate size. It has appropriate power size that it can selectively bind with proton all right so glass membrane has the appropriate charge or appropriate power size and charge that it can selectively bind with proton but this is the glass membrane the only the glass but how does it work in actual in real life uh, you know, most of the glass is dry, right? The glass that you fill the water to drink. <coughs> but the glass membrane that used for pH measurement has the properties we call it hygroscopic city. So what is that? So basically, if you have the glass and the, you uh, usually glass is dry, but if you put it in water or in aqueous solution, like this is external solution and this is internal solution. Like this one, this is the pH meter. This is a pH electrode. And this is gonna be your external solution and you have another solution inside it. So this is why I call it external solution and internal solution. Once you put the glass membrane in the aqueous solution, what can happen is that you don't get, you're gonna get the hydration hydration which will turn 
your glass membrane into something called hydrated gel. So it's gonna be gel. So that's why we call that the glass membrane is hygroscopic. It's basically it absorbs some water to make itself to be gel and uh, hydrated gel, gel from water. So this orange-ish uh, area is where you get the hydrate gel. And the hydrate gel has very like small area. This is only 10 nanometer small length compared to the dry glass, which is maybe like 0.1 millimeter in your pH meter. Your hydrate gel has very like small uh, length, only 10 nanometer. And your hydrate gel is where uh, selectively binding happens. So it is very important that you have your pH meter or your pH electrode, which is hydrate all the time. So that's why if you walk into the lab and you see the pH meter, the pH meter or the pH probe will be kept in an aqueous storage solution all the time. So this is like the small, uh, small bottle with the cap filling with the aqueous solution. Some people use water, some people use some electrolyte like K. CL or some buffer. That's where you uh, put your pH meter to keep it here. So you can see it here as well if you have the pH readout, but your pH electrode is immersed in the aqueous solution all the time to make it hydrated so that when you want to use it, you can use it uh, at that time. You don't need to wait for it. If your glass is dry, then you need to wait for it. You need to put it in your aqueous solution and wait for maybe 10 minutes or half an hour before you can read the value. So now what's gonna happen after that? Your, uh, your glass membrane in the, gel, in the gel site, in this hydrated gel, we have the ion exchange. What is ion exchange? So remember that your glass have some sodium oxide and you're gonna get some sodium ion. You can, you, can, you can see this equation, read this equation first. So you are, you're gonna have the ion exchange equilibrium. So your glass, you have, you can think about the glass as the anion. So your glass with your sodium ion, gonna get the ion exchange reaction. So your proton from your solution gonna switch with the sodium ion. So at the end, you get the glass with your proton from your sample and from your internal solution. And you're gonna get the sodium ion out from the glass binding site. So uh, basically from to visualize the process. So this is your glass, your glass has silicon oxide. So you can draw it like this is negative sign and it binds with cations. And if your external solution has more protons, then you get more positive charge. But here, if your internal solution has less protons, then you get less positive charge. And this picture, remember this picture? This picture is similar to, uh, to this picture. This picture you have membrane with different concentration of ion M. But for your glass membrane, it is similar. You have glass membrane, which is selectively binds with protons. This size, you have more protons. This size, you have less protons. So you get uh, membrane potential. So you get membrane potential. And so that your membrane potential for the glass membrane electrode is gonna be this one. E membrane equal to constant minus 0.0592 pH. This is derived from the last, uh, last few slides. But, uh, remember that your 0.0592 thing, well, it's valid only at 25 degrees Celsius. So if, if your temperature is changed, then this coefficient is not going to be 0.0592. So you can only multiply this by some constant beta. So you can, and your constant might be changed according to your temperature. So that's why you're gonna have to calibrate uh, your pH meter all the time so that you get the right constant and right beta, <coughs> right slope, we call it, to get the uh, correct pH readout. 
any question on the glass membrane electrode? So if uh, not, let's do some calculation problem. So example 2.4, consider the membrane potential with the same internal solution, but different external solution, which is pH 4 and pH 7. With the same ionic strain, we don't uh, care about it like right now. So the question is that at 25 degrees Celsius, what should be the ideal difference between the electrode potential from these samples? And B, what solution costs more positive or less negative membrane potential? This is a little bit uh, difficult, so let's draw it. So you have two, two scenario. Uh, you have two scenario here. You have two scenario here. You have two beakers. This bigger field with pH four. This bigger field did pH seven. And you have a pH electrode. And you have pH electrode, then you're going to have membrane potential. And this one, you're going to get membrane potential as well. So the question, the first question is that, what is the difference in this two value? What is the difference in these two value? Uh, you can think in many ways, but let's do the shorter one this is kind of cheating uh from the last slide i'm gonna go back to the last slide last slide we have this equation e membrane is equal to constant uh, minus 0.0592 uh, ph right multiplied by ph so at ph4 at ph4 your em is gonna be constant minus 0.0592 multiplied by 4. And let's leave it like that first. But at pH 7, your EM is going to be constant minus 0.0592 multiplied by 7, right, the pH. So the difference between these two numbers is going to be this one, right? EM minus uh, the two EM subtract to each other. So you get constant minus 0.0592 by 4 and minus constant minus 0.0592 by 7. And we have all the difference, so we put the absolute as well. And what 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 can you see here is that this is constant minus constant cancel each other, and this 0.0592 term is going to be 0.0592 uh, seven minus four. This is negative, right? This is negative and negative, so you get positive. So you can write something like this. So it's going to be 0.0592 by 7 minus 4. So you get what uh, I believe is 0.1596 uh, well, as the difference. So this is the answer. The short, the short, shorter way to do this is that you subtract the pH. So you subtract the pH seven and four and multiply by the coefficient like 0.0592. That's it. But this is this is the longer way. I want you to see like how how do I get this uh, shorter way. The second uh, the second question is that which uh, which solution costs more positive membrane potential. So what do I mean by this? So what, which solution costs more positive membrane potential? So you can see here, 
and that in pH four you have higher proton concentration, right? Ten to the fourth, but pH seven you have less proton concentration. So of course this is more positive, right? This is more positive. So your pH four is more positive. pH four has more positive, more positive membrane potential. So that's the that's the that's the B the question B. Any question on this example? <laughs> 